Welcome back to my channel, I'm Brushes and Bunnies, and in this video we're going to be doing another very exciting Scrawler Box unboxing video. This is my second Scrawler Box, and I just came back from a shopping spree. Technically just grocery shopping, not really a shopping spree, but this was in my post box. So we're going to unbox it together and see what's inside. So this is the January edition of the Scrawler Box. Alright, so... I actually have no idea what's inside. I did not watch any other videos yet, so this is a surprise. All right. This is always so exciting and a little bit of a mystery because everything is packed really nicely in this tissue paper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this aside. Oops, some things are popping up. And we're gonna take a look at this first. Ooh, what's this? What type of paper. It's almost like sandpaper or something, but I guess it's something that you use to paint on. Okay, so let's put this aside and we'll take a look at this. This is the featured artist. Her name is Marlene Rye. I'm assuming she does something with pastels. I don't know what kind of medium this is, but it looks very pretty. Pastel colors, picture of a sunset or a sunrise, I'm not quite sure which one. I, I'm guessing it has something to do with pastels. And for me, pastels are actually really difficult to work with, so um, this is gonna be fun. All right, so we got paper. Unfortunately, it has been damaged in the shipping, so, and the box also has a bit of a fold. I'm not exactly sure. I guess they try to force it into my post box. Um, this is not really cool. There's also two different shades kind of a pinkish tone and one that's a little bit more cool in color. So let's open up the little bundle here and see what we have. Ooh, ah, okay, so I understand. It is pastels. Oh my gosh, okay. Okay, so we got the Scrawler Box logo here um, with like the artist's art. This looks really cool. January edition. So this is the very first box for this year. And basically with this box, we're going to be exploring an artistic medium that you may not have tried before, which is totally true in my case. Ooh, there's something else. Oh my gosh, is this candy? <laughs> I go straight for the candy. Uh, I actually have no idea what this is. Dipper, chewy caramel. Yes, strawberry flavored. Cool, check that out. We have, I believe, two items. The very first one is soft pastels. These are half sticks, so I guess they're about this size. And they are from the brand Rembrandt. These pastels offer excellent color release and should have intense pure colors. They also have a good degree of light fastness and a very high coloring power due to high concentration of pigment. All right, so we're gonna put this aside. And these three pencils, they are also pastel. These design pastel pencils are used to add finer detail in the work. And you've got three colors, which look beautiful. These pastel pencils are superior quality pastels encased within a pencil. They are crafted with the finest light fast pigments and kaolin clay. The double glued colored core combined with the finest light cedar casings make them very resistant to breaking. The official Scrawler challenge for this theme is Reflective Skies, and they basically recommend to use different techniques such as smudging, blending, combining colors together, and basically drawing something that has to do with a sunset or a sky visual that reminds us of a certain time or place and to convey that feeling in our work. Now for me personally, the very first thing that comes to mind is actually the cliff sides of Ireland and this is why I decided to draw a sort of visual that represented that. Um, the idea is that from this point of view, you're kind of standing on a cliff. You've got the beautiful colors of the greens and the yellows and the purples and reds and pinks and you're looking out at the ocean with the sunset. Ireland is one of my favorite places in the entire world, so I really wanted to try to convey this in the drawing. And I was really worried that I would not be able to do this just because, first of all, I had no greens. Um, so I had to uh, be creative in terms of creating greens with the blue and the yellow tones. And second of all, um, because it's a very special place to me, I wasn't sure how to do this with a medium that I've never really used before. So it was fun, challenging, and a little bit exciting to see what the final outcome would be. 
Uh, when thinking of challenges, there were really three different types of challenges that I was facing when working on this project. Um, the first one was, of course, the mess. So uh, when working with pastels, you do get a lot of residue coming out of the pastel stick and also onto your paper and all the way around. But throughout the filming of this video, I actually had to pause and kind of blow off the dust into my trash bin and um, get back to recording afterwards. Of course, I only did this when things got a little bit too crazy, when there was a lot of dust. So you can see like right now, there's a lot of dust happening and um, it just kind of got in the way sometimes. And other times I tried to use it as, you know, as part of the work to kind of like blend a little bit better. The second challenge came with the sort of restrictions on the colors that I had. So obviously with the um, the sort of box from Rembrandt, the soft pastel box, I had to only use those and figure out a way on how to blend the colors together to create a different tone or a different shade um, or even an entirely different color. So you can see I was trying to achieve a kind of greenish color um, for the cliffside of um, yeah this cliff in Ireland. Ireland is a very green country and I really wanted to add green in there so I did try my best to try to create a type of greenish color. Um, I think it did turn out but it was yeah it's just it's just a different way of working and this is um I think this was the toughest thing for me. And then the very last challenge was, of course, I didn't have a darker shade than the purple that I had. I wish I had almost a dark black or a super, super dark purple that almost went black. I could have definitely used this contrast. Yeah, it was fun trying to figure out how to get maybe an even darker color or how to blend to get a darker color with the different colors that I did have. Overall, I had a lot of fun doing this and it was actually really nice and relaxing to try something like this. And while I was actually drawing with the pastels, I just couldn't help but think about my upcoming trip to Ireland and how excited I am to actually see these cliffs in reality once more. I'll be going in March, so that is actually in a little over a month and I'll be going there for around two weeks, I think two and a half weeks maybe. And uh, yeah, we're going for St. Patrick's Day, so it's going to be a lot of fun and we'll be seeing the ancient east and going on the wild Atlantic way again and basically staying up in the Sligo area. So I'm quite excited for that. Um, it's just like, I don't know, I, I, I just I just love this country so much, so much. The last time we were there, it was in 2018, so it's already been, what, two years, I believe? Yeah, 2020, yeah. It's been two years, and I've been missing it ever since we actually went for the first time. We have great plans to move there one day. I hope that will eventually happen. Um, yeah, make the move from Germany to Ireland. These are dreams. I don't know if it's going to be a reality, but yeah, this time around, we're going to go for two weeks and try to live the life of locals and see how it is and how we like it. And um, yeah, my parents are also joining, so that's going to be a crazy experience for us as well and for them because they haven't traveled in like five years. Throughout the trip, not only will I be hiking, but I also want to take lots of photos, videos, and also do some gouache painting um, or just paint with gouache. This is something I really, really, really want to do. I want to do some more landscape work and um, really try to capture my trip in a really unique way. So I think I'm going to buy a sketchbook. I'm going to be doing um, um, some sketches and gouache paintings in the sketchbook and I'll be uploading it onto my Instagram account and maybe doing a video as well. So if you want to follow that, um, do check out my Instagram. A link is down below in the video description. This is the final product and what I'm going to do is spray it with universal fixative. Basically this can be used on pastel, watercolor, gouache, paint, and charcoal in pencil so basically you just spray a couple layers and um, it will seal the actual um, material so in this case with pastel it's very easy to kind of mess it up so what i'm just going to do is shake the can and we're just going to be applying one layer first let it dry and then we'll apply a second layer so this stuff does smell really strong, so I would recommend keeping a window open and just letting it kind of uh, dry off near the window. And it will change the color, um, but as it dries, it will get back to normal. So I'm just like, going to set this aside and we'll come back once it's all dried. This is the final product after one layer of spraying with the protective coat. Um, as you can see, the color did change a lot. It became a lot darker than the original color. Um, the good thing is, however, is that when you run your finger, you won't get any pastel residue on your 
on your skin basically and this is what you want when you hang the final portrait onto the wall i'm not exactly sure if all protective layers or sprays will darken the color there might be some out there for pastel specifically but i just wouldn't know i just happen to have the one for uh like a universal fixative so yeah this is the final result and um this was a really fun challenge i actually quite like this and um, probably would be willing to try pastels again Thank you all for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy it. Please let me know below in the comments. And don't forget to check out my social media, Facebook and Instagram, down below in the video description. I'd like to wish you all a great Sunday and have a good start to the rest of the week.